the dance along the artery, the circulation of the lymph are figured in the Drift of Stars. My name's Lee Feinstein. I'm a painter and an art writer. My stuff is um, unique because it's on Tybeck, which is high-density polyethylene uh, DuPont product and um, an architectural product, a building construction product. But basically I love it because it's cheap and big and very white, beautifully white. I can fold it and dye it, I can squunch it and crunch it, and I can um, make extremely large works. All my paintings are meditations on flow. They're a product of time and gravity. I pin the Tyvek onto the wall and I paint on the wall so gravity takes its course over time. And sometimes I let them drip and then I come back the next day and I turn them upside down and I paint on them some more. The movement of my paint on the surface has to obey the laws of physics. Um, viscosity of the different paints, the viscosity of the different pigments, latex, acrylic, even different colors in the pigments. The earth pigments are very slow compared to some things that are very pounded and um, refined. I've mostly just used water as a dilute, as a dilution for my paints. And it's almost like they're giant watercolors or giant drawings. They're inspired by all the things that I see around me. The drips on a windshield, the movement of clouds in the sky, the tides. Everything that is rhythmic and repetitive, but that is in constant motion. And he said that my... Ever since I started doing Tyvek, I only do it with my left hand. I said that my right hand was the hand of intention and my left hand is the hand of revelation, and that when I paint with my right hand or draw with my right hand, I'm always censoring myself and judging myself. And, um, and I write right-handed, and that's like an anal the analytical brain. And when I paint left-handed, I don't judge it, I just let it come out. It's a very different process. Beautiful, and I would just take it back to I'm the a wordy and person. try to make some. I was probably not meant to be an artist. I'm not sure it's my best skill. I thought I would be a writer. My work is about communicating something, a mental state, a state of the moment, and I couldn't say those things in words. I've always felt that art asks questions. Craft doesn't ask questions. Craft is about technical proficiency. But art is about asking questions. So there were questions that I wanted to ask that were nonverbal and answers that I wanted to generate that were nonverbal. I am showing work four installations at the Stanford School of Medicine, um, which is a brand new building. It's the Li Ka Shing Center. And I was trying to do work that responded to the architecture. So it's a big modernist box with very, very, very tall columns. I ended up doing four 12 foot by four foot scrolls. And um, I had done for a previous project a series of eight cardboard sonotube tube wrapped again industrial material and I thought maybe I could put eight columns at significant points all along the, the curving banquettes. Well I think it was a success because my husband took one of the professors and so he said oh yeah they painted the columns. There were no columns there before. There were no columns at all. I'm very inspired by Japanese work. I'm even more inspired by the, the principles behind Japanese work. The metaphor for myself in making a vast amount of work is that I'm going to be a potter. I'm not trying to make a masterpiece of any kind, but I'm going to be a potter who throws tea bowls every single day. And I'm going to throw enough tea bowls so that the tea bowls start at this level. And then if I throw them and make enough tea bowls, they're going to get to this level. And if I keep working, the tea bowls are going to get to this level. And that basically, it's the practice that determines everything. It isn't the individual work, it's the continuity of it, and it's the practice, and it really needs to be a daily practice. When you go into your studio, the world comes with you. The art world, critics, your friends, your parents, your spouse, everybody comes with you. If you stay there long enough, they all leave one by one. And if you're really lucky, even you leave. That's when the work really happens.